everybody, this is a Watts Weekly. Um, I'm not sure if this one has been done by somebody else already, but I'm just going to talk about how I do a glue up panel. Uh, I've already done a stretch canvas demonstration, so I do get asked questions quite a bit about uh, making panels. Uh, they are a lot more cost effective than purchasing, so um, you just need to have the right supplies, I think, to, to do it properly. Um, and a lot of the failures that people have had happen to them are usually related to the supplies that they have on hand. So just be prepared with your materials first before you start practicing them. Um, I do not recommend ever using spray glues or any of those quickie alternatives which seem to work really well in the beginning but then your canvas can fall right off during the middle of a um, plein air event or you know even in class they bubble up, things like that. So um, for me one of the most important things I have for making a glue up is this <laughs> rolling pin. Um, I got this at Home Goods. I'm not sure where you can get them now because this was years and years ago. It's essentially um, a, a pretty heavy metal or aluminum based rolling pin, but it has this sort of spongy silicone outer, and I find that that gets the right amount of pressure to get the canvas to get all the bubbles out but um, still allow a little flexibility. If you're using a really hard rolling pin, like a wooden one, um, it doesn't really have any give to it, so you can't really get in the nooks and crannies that you may come across in your in your canvas or your surface. Um, so I like this with the silicones. So you might look for something like a, uh, a non-stick rolling pin. That might be um, something you can find on Amazon or a silicone rolling pin. They're not cheap, but it's a tool you'll never have to buy again if you get the right one the first time. So I highly recommend that. I originally was using a brayer, which is a very small little uh, rubbery rolling pin that they use for inking. You roll it across an ink print, um, but that's just so tiny that you really can't get the leverage on it. So this has been one of the best things ever for doing um, glue ups. The surface that you glue to, you can do um, uh, like a door skin panel or you know quarter inch. Um, plywood, not the kind with the knots in it, Those, that's not preferable, um, but I think one of the cheapest and best surfaces is your masonite. Um, this is tempered and it only comes from Lowe's in our area. The Home Depot um, brand has um, one side that's smooth and one that's rough and you don't want that because that rough side can absorb water and cause um, puffing to happen in the back of your canvas, so you don't want that. You want this tempered masonite. And then I just lightly sand one side so it's it's got a little less tooth or a little less slick of a tooth to it. Um, but this has been like oil prepared so it's a little bit more resistant to elements. So you'll want something like this or um, you know a quarter inch or half inch um, plywood. I have done very large glue ups, 20 by 40s, and in that case I used a half inch um, plywood of high quality. Um, it just works a lot better. If you go up in size dramatically, you're probably going to want to use a little thicker base because they will kind of bend and pucker a little bit. The masonite doesn't do it too much, but um, you might find that they do tend to top though. And once you put it in a frame, that, that, comes, that, that flattens out, so thank you. Um, scissors and a, and a pencil, you'll need, you'll need that for cutting out. And I use a spatula for the glue. And then the glue I use is just good old Elmer's. Um, it's archival, it's easy to find and it's never peeled. I've never had one ever peel off. I mean, the whole time I've been doing these, um, I usually buy like a giant jug of it and just smear it everywhere. Uh, this is just easy. I have it on hand. And then when I do my canvas stretching, a lot of times I'll have small weird cut off pieces that are left over like these. And so I just save them. I don't throw anything away unless it's like an inch. But even, you know, small pieces like this, you can always make little tiny uh, gesture size panels with, with pieces like this. So just hold on to those things that you think, oh, I'm never going to use that. And you, you might find that you do. So, um, let me see here, I'll use, I'll use this one. So this is just a, a panel. It's got this raw edge that's, that's not been um, sized or, uh, it probably has sizing, but it doesn't have any of the finish on there and that's okay if a little bit of that shows up on the edge of my panel I'm not overly concerned with it um, but this should fit on there without even having to worry about that um, so first thing I do is I take the canvas and I put it face down and I place my 
panel on there and just I just set it on there. I could probably go this way, but I'm going to add a lot of that raw edge, so I, I want to be a little more professional looking than that. So I'm going to place it like this. And I'm going to just trace around it. Just like that. And I can use that as my template as, as to where I'm going to put the panel and also just for my cutting guide. I recommend a quarter inch um, selvage on all sides of the glue up. If you get too much more than that, it can cause a lot of more bubbling along the edge of there. If you do under a quarter inch, sometimes the amount of shrinkage that the canvas um, encounters can actually pull into the inside of your panel and you don't really want that if you can help it. So about a quarter of an inch is sufficient to allow for that flexibility. Uh, and when you're done, you can just, um, after it dries overnight, you can just cut off the excess with a fine razor blade and it cuts off very easily gets a pretty clean edge so now you know companies who can make these panels professionally they have a whole system and heat presses and you know that's why their stuff looks amazing my panels may not look super beautiful on the edges but they're always um, holding up to, to what I do to them they don't tend to peel off or anything like that so that's a good thing uh, I find that the amount of glue that um, you put down can be a difference in whether your panel comes out good or not. It's the right ratio. If you have too much, it's just gooing everywhere and sliding around, and too little, um, you get a lot more bubbles and issues like that. So finding the, the learning curve for how much glue you need is, is definitely part of the process. Um, I'd say I probably made, you know, five to ten of these before um, I got pretty consistent results and that's a pretty good expectation of yourself that you know the first 10 you do are probably going to suck. Um, I've had some where they're half good half bad I've just cut them down <laughs> because I don't want to waste the half that's good. You really can't peel the, the surface off and start over again with using the Elmer's. So here this is why I have a spatula. Um, I just find that they're easy to clean up and it kind of puts the glue at, at a nice even amount where if I'm just trying to spread it with something else, it doesn't really get spread very well. It's kind of like frosting a cake, I'm just kind of making it as smooth as possible. Um, and then I like to add a little extra glue on all the perimeter edges because that's where I find it tends to disappear. And I want to see a little bit of excess kind of bubble out when I'm all done. So I, I kind of do it like that. So I'm wipe this off on here. This can be one of the trickier parts is the actual um, rolling part, um, the process of rolling it. So now I'm going to use my little guideline. So that way it's somewhat centered. See, there's, a, there's quite a bit of like slipperiness that happens right now. So if you're overly um, if you overly exert yourself with your rolling pin, you can actually slide that canvas half halfway off. I like to keep a, a dampened rag at hand because if I have a lot of excess glue coming off, I don't want that getting all over the rolling pin and getting on the canvas, so you just keep a, a damp towel at hand. Okay, so I obviously put the prepared glued part down on the raw side of the canvas. Don't put it on this side. I know that's just logical, but you know, you might go, well, something's not right about this if you do it incorrectly. Okay, so here's where I find is, is the difference if my panel comes out good or bad. It's usually in this part of the process. I like to start in the center and just gently push in an opposite direction. If you have old pads of paper, like this was a crummy old pad of paper. They're great for doing glue ups on because if the glue runs off the edge like it has here, you don't care about it. You don't want to do it on your nice floor or if you keep old pieces of, of newspaper around. So when I'm first initially doing it, I'm kind of just gently dragging it in opposite directions, checking to make sure I'm not getting glue. But I kind of want it to run up and over the edge so that way I know it's getting all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to go this direction. I'm just going to kind of pull. Now I'm going to use a little more exertion and just kind of 
rub it. And flip it over and just take a look at it. What I want to see is that I've had some, this is a mess, I don't want to see that. Uh, I want to see that I've had some glue coming out, some glue coming out on all the edges and I pretty much am seeing glue except for maybe along this perimeter. So I'm going to roll a little bit more and when you put it back down and you have glue, this is why I use multiple pieces of scrap paper because it helps keep that glue from getting all over the place. And usually when I do these glue ups, I try to do a lot at once because it's, it is a pain in the butt and I'm not going to lie, it's not my most favorite activity in being an artist, but if I do a bunch at once, it kind of has the satisfaction. And yes, that's it. That is glued on all sides. And I take my towel, and I just kind of wipe off the excess. It's damp. Sides. Turn over just to make sure I don't have glue all over, because sometimes it still has a man way of managing to creep in there. And then the most important step after you've glued it all up is how you actually set it to dry. Because if you put this on an uneven surface, it's not going to um, press all the glue in correctly. So you might find, oh, my floor is uneven. Like our floor is not perfectly level. And it's wood, so it's got kind of lumps in it. So I like to make sure I'm putting it on in between two things that are as flat as possible. So I say, <laughs> these big old books. I don't want to even look at the books. I just use them as a device for panel pressing. You want to make sure whatever you set it on, like a large book, is larger than the panel. If you put it on something smaller than the panel, it's going to cause indentations when it, when it presses. So you're going to set it down, face down. Now if you do multiple sizes at once, you can stack them, but it's better to work from the large, largest size panel down to your smaller. That way you're always kind of making sure that weight's distributed and then I like to put things in between like I'll put one down put another panel on top put another panel down another book on top and that way I don't have something smaller or larger than what I'm doing not getting um, even distribution of, of, the, of the weight so once I put that face down like that I got this giant book like French painting yeah you know, like I look at that um, but this is a nice big giant book I'll stack them on there and then I might stack some other things on top so that way I just have enough weight on there to make sure that it, it's securely mounted. After you let this sit overnight, um, the next morning when you when you get up, you know, you just take that off and you'll, you'll find your canvas. It should have probably slightly drawn in a little bit on the edges. You might see a little bit less. You might see some waves along the edges here. They're usually okay. I put it face down on a cutting board and I just get a razor blade and I just trim it all the way to the edge very quickly. Now you might find that, oh, I missed an area with my glue. It didn't really get to a certain area. And you can just peel that back, put a little glue in there. I just put a little um, clamp on there with like a, like a piece of wood or something that's flat. And I just reclamp that for 15 minutes and it's good to go. So it's, it's pretty simple. Um, that's, that's about all there is to that. Um, again, having the right materials, a good rolling pin, um, flat surfaces, heavy enough books to do, to do your um, pressing, and you'll find you get much better results. And it's just being prepared in the beginning. And don't try to take shortcuts with using spray-on glue or any of those weird things, because I have seen all kinds of disasters happen with that, literally in class. Um, and I've never had a disaster happen with that. Yes, I've had occasions where I might have a bubble or puckering um, happen. I've had a bubble in the middle and the rest of it's great. I cut it with a little razor blade, cut the bubble, put a little glue inside that little hole and re-flatten it and I've had it come out really good. So um, they are salvageable within reason. If you come in and they're completely rippled, rip, rippled and puckered, you wanna look at that and say, what did I do? wrong? Why is it rippling like that? Did I have so too much glue? Did I not really press it out evenly? Um, did I not have enough glue in some areas pulled in and caused air bubbles? So those are, those are things you want to look at and analyze when you make your panels. 
Um, but you know, I can make a panel like that for a dollar, and it's just so much more economical, and I can control the size and the type of surface that I use. Okay, talk to you later.